70 years ago, the rail line at El Alamein was a frontline barrier. The battle here was crucial to turning the tide of World War II against the Nazis. Bill Corey says the Allies, led by Britain, were behind one side of the bank, the fascist armies of Germany and Italy behind the other. Well, I remembered about this spot, really. The, uh, you know, we were this side of the line and you didn't put your head over the, the top of that line to see what was going on. 21 veterans of El Alamein toured the battlefield where they forced the enemy into a crushing retreat. They recalled a great victory and great horrors as well. Well, I think we had about 100 casualties on, the, on the November the 1st. In one day? Yes. Heavy fighting it was pretty uh, fierce because that was, uh, that was really the turning point. You know? Jack Capel has vivid memories of the battle that began at night with the roar of 900 cannons and continued for 12 gruelling days. We lost so many men that next few days that they were either wounded or killed. So we went in with 750 and came out for 50 standing. So that was a heavy loss. Jack and his men were sent to overrun a German machine gun position at night. They succeeded because they persisted even though they were spotted. Lit us up like day and opened up with all the machine guns they had. Bullets flying everywhere. These graves are an extraordinary record of love and loss, of a son who will never be forgotten, of another whose smile will always be remembered. They offer an important chance for the living to commemorate the dead, but 200 Australians were listed as missing in action, and here they remain the unknown soldiers. Matt Brown, ABC News, El Alamein. I find it fitting that we are assembled today in this beautiful cemetery in which the fallen of so many countries are honoured. The majority of the countries which took part in the North Africa campaign are represented here as the headstones recount in their simple and moving way. For quite a number of them, the heroism shown by their young men is an important part of their founding story as modern nations. That too is right and fitting. What better inspiration can we find of self-sacrifice and personal courage? We fought at Marsa Matru and Tobruk and uh, well we didn't and Gazala, all this Libyan campaign. And then we moved over to uh, Middle East to uh, Iraq because some of the Polish soldiers were released from camps in Russia and they came over to strengthen our brigade. And after the war part of us settled outside the country and some went back to the Russian system, to the communism. I was one who didn't go back. I stayed in London, completed my university studies, worked, got uh, a pension. There are some from my unit, but a particular friend had been in the, he was in the Air Force, and he had been killed further north up towards Sidi Barani. Uh, I, I tried to contact where he was buried, and the uh, war graves just told me that he, uh, uh, no uh, remains were found, uh, but so his name is on the wall and I was able to uh, put a poppy up against his name on the wall. Well, a touching memorial service has been held for the more than 1,200 Aussie diggers 
who never made it back from the battlefields of El Alamein. 21 surviving members made the historic trek to Egypt seven decades on. 10 correspondent Brett Mason was invited along. Marching once more into the dusty Egyptian desert, 21 brave Australian diggers return to the scene of violence so horrific it haunts them seven decades on. Tears were shed on the now silent battlefield as emotional tributes were paid to the 1,200 Australian soldiers who never made it home. Someone was looking after me. All coming back now. It's not me. I represent those. I represent all those that didn't come back. The moving memorial service held just a few hundred metres from their final resting place. It hasn't been easy for the last surviving veterans to return here to Egypt. They say it's now up to a new generation to ensure those who paid the ultimate sacrifice and never forgotten. These blokes, we've had 70 years of life, of wooing women, becoming engaged, married, dancing, raising children, getting grandchildren. And these blokes are there. You never know, they might have been the cure for cancer there somewhere. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Lest we forget. Lest we forget. In El Alamein, Brett Mason, 10 News. Mon oncle a été tué ici, il avait 23 ans, mais je ne suis pas sûre que ce soit l'âge qu'il avait vraiment quand il est mort. Je pense qu'il avait plutôt 21 ans en fait. Et mon père et son autre frère étaient ici aussi. Les trois frères ont combattu ici et l'un d'entre eux a été tué. J'ai trouvé ça beaucoup plus émouvant que je ne le croyais. J'ai pensé à mes camarades qui sont restés et ça m'a beaucoup touché. Vraiment, euh, je ne m'attendais pas à cette réaction. Nous demandons aux nations de l'Alliance et de l'Axe de retirer les mines qu'ils ont posées ici il y a 70 ans. Nous ne demandons rien de plus que ça. Australian veterans have attended a moving memorial service for the 70th anniversary of the Battle of El Alamein. It was the bloody battle in Egypt which turned the tide of the Second World War. Nick McCallum was at the service. Jess, it was quite a stirring sight as the Australian veterans, now aged in their late 80s and early 90s, marched back into the desert for the memorial service. They laid wreaths to honour the 1,200 Australians killed in the Battle of El Alamein 70 years ago. Memories just came flooding back. It's all come back now. It's just come back now so vividly. But, uh, I will never forget. Yeah, we don't forget. No, we can't forget it. No, we won't. It has been physically and emotionally demanding for these veterans to come back here, but they say it's the least they could do for their friends who never came back. I represent all those that didn't come back and have died since, you know. These blokes, we've had 70 years of life, of wooing women, becoming engaged, married, dancing, raising children, getting grandchildren. 
and these blokes are there. You never know, there might have been the cure for cancer there somewhere. And the veterans will return to Australia tomorrow, Jess. Veterans of the Battle of El Alamein and serving military arrive at Westminster Abbey to mark its 70th anniversary. The 14-day battle in North Africa is widely hailed as the turning point in the Second World War. More than 4,000 Allied servicemen were killed and 9,000 wounded as General Montgomery's troops defeated German Erwin Rommel's Africa Corps. Rommel had inflicted heavy defeats on Allied forces who were fighting to keep open vital supply lines. Monty's counter-attack broke the Germans and helped to drive the Axis powers out of Africa. Forty British and Australian veterans attended Evensong in London, along with Chief of the Defence Staff Sir David Richards. For many veterans, the coordinated gun offensive, which helped to turn the tide, lives longest in the memory. We were on slightly higher ground than the guns. You could see a lot of the guns, the flashes. You could hear the roar of the, it was a thousand gun barrage, something more akin to the First World War than the fighting that had been going on in the desert. That's one of my main memories. At 9.40, every gun opened up. They were almost touching each other, each gun, side by side for the whole 20 miles from Alamein down to the Qatar Depression. And the sky was bright with the lights of the, uh, of the guns and the noise, because we were probably a, about a mile in front of them. But it was still a tremendous amount of noise. It went on till 10 o'clock, 9.40 to 10. And uh, I'd, I'd seen lots of barrages, but I'd never seen one like this before. The British offensive at El Alamein will also be marked in Afghanistan by the 4th Mechanised Brigade. Their black rat insignia was adopted at El Alamein and continues to be worn to this day.